Georgia <laughs> has given the captain, Hendo, um, Football Writers Association Player of the Year a 10 uh -huh. out of 10. Yeah. I... I'm, I, I, Chris has had this notion so far that like no one really deserves a 10 in, yeah. in the season and I'd look that's absolutely <laughs> fine <laughs> that's absolutely fine thank you it is but I, 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 I'll be honest I kind of I, I, I agree with Chris's thinking in some regards but it's hard for me and I don't want to fall into this trap of like uh, a nostalgia kind of like soft set oh come on I oh, will Jordan. I'll fall into that no but I don't think we need to I think Jordan Henderson's been fantastic I don't think he could have had a the only way he has a better season is what, if he doesn't injured. have if he doesn't get injured yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's completely out of his control he's the Premier League lifting captain for us after 30 years how does he not get a 10 yeah I think any games that he missed out on that might have caused him to knock down, Chris could arguably be be filled in for with him coming back from injury to do the Hendo shuffle uh, against against probably against medical advice. You know, like that's that's it's almost where it might it might be worth a mark on its own. He was he was almost faultless this season, and you know, not just in the position where he plays normally the eight, it was the six as well, wasn't it? You know, he was he was absolutely incredible this season. Season. And for me, he was one of four players who, if I was going to give a 10 to, I'd give a 10 to all four of them. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I'd agree with that. I think I think it was that period when Fabinho come back from his injury, when Henderson had been playing that six, you kind of seen the levels and you was able to appreciate how how good Jordan Henderson was in that position when even Fabinho, like credit to him, he just couldn't come back and hit the same heights he was at before he was injured. I think we, we we dropped the gear or there was maybe a different intensity, maybe, I'm not sure. But for me, I, I'm like you, there, would, there could have easily been four players I could have given a 10 to this season and Jordan would have definitely been in those four. I haven't given 10s to four, I've only given them to two. And I don't think he could have done much more really this season. But ultimately, I just, I, I've just went for a nine and I think... That's because I hope next season he can he can defend the Premier League title, and if he does nice. that, then yeah, ten out of ten. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's um he's phenomenal. He's genuinely phenomenal, and and I do think sometimes I've I've, I've doesn't look I've gone I've oh, oh, right, the pudding I've gone too far or whatever. But it annoys me. It really annoys me that I don't mind people thinking that who, who, who look at Jordan Henderson and they go, he's not world class you know because because I think you can judge world class in a number of ways I don't think he's in the grouping of players that includes Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo and let's say Mug Salah and Virgil van Dijk for the sake of argument Chris um, but I this Liverpool team the best team in the country still the reigning European champions it's a film and world champions all that kind of all that shebang it, this team is built in Jordan Henderson's image. It's built around Jordan Henderson. He, without him in the side, the side does not function to the level that it functions to. And that is the biggest compliment I think anyone could possibly pay Jordan Henderson because for all the world-class talent in there, he facilitates it and it's so obvious. This is not me going, like it's not a flight of fancy. He, he just proved that. He proved that with his absence as much as his presence this season. He, he did and look, he makes everybody's game around him better and you can't, you can't put a figure on that really, and it's not—it's—it's it's an intangible, isn't it? So you, you look at him and go, "We're we're just not a good, as good a side." Also, you think of like where he is as a footballer, where he was, and everything that he's been through in his story and stuff like that. So, I think what I'm trying to say is, I think Jordan Anderson had a ceiling as a footballer, and I think Jordan Anderson smashed through his ceiling. Yeah, hundred mm percent. -hmm. Yeah. Like I don't know what like FIFA ratings is quite an interesting thing because I think in a FIFA rating like you never get a hundred do you no. like so that's most comparable maybe to whether you get a ten or not here difference of course but I think Jordan Anderson might be a ninety two in FIFA but he's played there a ninety seven all season yeah okay. like, like you know what I mean does that make sense yeah I mean like it, just to, just to take the FIFA thing not necessarily what you're saying but it's not possible to get the highest ratings in like because in certain ways because you don't possess the skills that the, the algorithm's built around. Mm -hmm. Like Jordan Henderson is not like in, in he's the not a goal scorer like Ronaldo. Oh. Yeah, exactly. He's not a ten goal a season midfielder. No. He's not a, a plus, you know, double figures assistant midfielder. He doesn't. He's not 
He's not a dribbler. He's not, you know, he, he's he, and he's not a he's not a crunching centre. He's allowed to fucking grind you down. He's just, but he but he, he suffers teams. Brilliant and 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 I think the suffocates biggest suffocates. Yeah, teams. well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, he suffered through a few teams. To be fair, in his time at Liverpool, mainly at the tail end of Brendan Rodgers, but he um, he. The, the big moment and we mentioned it Edel, is that he starts the season I, look think about last season mm-hmm. Fabinho f- comes in and I think goes past Jordan Henderson yeah, yeah, and he shows us what you can do what a six can be and Jordan Henderson has a little moment there at the back end of last season it's actually in the build to the Southampton game and he's on the bench but he's gone into Jürgen and gone Play me, Fair. play me further forward. Mm-hmm. Just give me that chance, and I'll and I'll and I'll do the business for you. And there's a lot of lads who think they're better than they are. They're generally the people that you laugh at on the X Factor, and they've got it in their head that they're they're amazing. But when it's tested in the real world, it doesn't stand up. Jordan mm-hmm. Henderson goes to Jurgen Klopp, balls out, and goes, mate, give me. give me that chance. Just give me the chance. And he comes on and we win that game because of Jordan Henderson's influence. And he doesn't look back. And he finishes the season amazingly. High tempo, high energy, back to being the Jordan Henderson that was really starting to win people over before his injuries. And he carries that into this season. And and he's still, and he's, I think he's brilliant all season long. Then Fabinho gets injured and we go, ah, what do we do, what do, we do here? This might derail us. And he goes into the six, and we don't, and we continue to not lose a game, but we we actually get better. Yeah. Um, not come up to a ten for me. Yeah. I I, I he's a ten for me. Um, he's been com- converted. Yeah. I, I I the one comparison that I was going to make about Jordan Anderson, and I've seen it or I've said it as for, for just one player for a while, is. It's that difference. If you was to turn around and say right now for your centre mid, who's the most messy like centre mid? You're gonna turn around and say Kevin De Bruyne. Most people, do you know what I mean? He has that creativity. He's got the eye for the ball. He can he can finish. He can pretty much do everything in in the same way that Messi can further forward on the pitch. It's pure talent. Don't get me wrong. There's been the ability and there's been the work rate and there's been the consistency to De Bruyne's game. But it is pure, it's purely talent based. As a footballer, he's just mustard. I always have likened Jordan Henderson since he broke that ceiling that you have mentioned uh, in the Cristiano Ronaldo mould. I think in terms of Cristiano, I don't think he was ever 1920 projected to be a world beater because of his determination, because of his, when he went to Real Madrid, it was, I need to be the best. I've got to become the best. It was that obsession with getting better every single day. I think Jordan Henderson took a little leaf out of, not maybe his book, but... Look Beckham, look Beckham is an example of that. Like, look at, look at Gerrard again. The best players in, in world football, with, the, with obvious exceptions, because there's a few, like, Brazilian lads. Like, like, the original Ronaldo was famously not a great trainer because he was just so... He was so naturally gifted he didn't need to work at it as much. But the, 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 tr- the, the truly best, because of the sacrifices you have to make in modern football... There's the lads, there's lads who go all in. There's some, and I always refer to it like I, I, Kev Nolan is a is a really was a really good footballer. He probably gets a bit forgotten now because he he wasn't a stellar light, but he was a Premier League captain yeah. for three different football clubs. Had a good a good Premier League level career, scored a good amount of goals. But when the game finished and he and he was done with his commitments to footy, he was in the pub yeah. and he was with his mates. And I always say he the beat Kyle Classic will be on the telly and he'd have us back to it. Jordan Henderson is the lad who's at home watching footy and not drinking and getting to bed early and getting up and making sure that he's the most he's the and, and, and best version of himself he can be. I think as well when it was in the uh, Lalana interview that, that came out the other day on on um the oh, Liverpool and he was saying um when they used to ride home together after one and he went in to training together and he was still going on about the game that they drew as if he'd lost it and that how he took it on as his responsibility of that he should be better the the team the, the loss the, it was like a loss because he didn't do it as much as I said I was thinking this guy's crazy because he's taken this as a loss but he's taken it on his shoulders <laughs> and and that's just Jordan Henderson I think it's it's the timing as well because you've got the uh, JB Carragher podcast with him comes out in this season as well because I think it really adds to Jordan Henderson I think how Frankie talks in that and there's a great moment in it again look it shouldn't it's not to do with this season really but I, I, I the things that he gets under the, the, the underrated qualities but he's, he is a, he's a fighter he doesn't if he for a single second thought of himself the way that some of his biggest detractors thought 
then I don't think he'd have had this career at all. But he, he never has. He does. You know, think about him squaring up to Diego Costa. There's that great story in the Cara podcast where he think Luis Suarez is a, a bit of a fucking like. He doesn't play like ball, like, right, yeah, doesn't pass the ball. And Henderson basically goes at him and fucking has a big fucking pop. And this is Luis Suarez, the best footballer, one of the best footballers ever to play the game. And Jordan Henderson's like, nah, mate. And, 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 and shouts him down and gains the respect for it. He, um, yeah, we, we, I think we, too, I think we, given the shoes that he's had to fill, he's had to fill a legend's shoes. Mm. And he, but I think it's harder to do what he's done than it is to be the De Bruyne when you are just that talented. People are going to build teams around you. People are it, going to move the air for you and your it's ability. It's the same arguments about the defenders getting underrated and, and overly critical of them as it is with Jordan Henson. Kevin De Bruyne, well, nine times out of ten, scored ten out of ten no matter how bad his team does because he does moments of brilliance. Mm -hmm. Jordan Henson doesn't do these moments of brilliance. Nobody blames Kevin De Bruyne for Man City losing nine games this season. Exactly, because he does these things that are just out of this world and you think... Like, yeah. no, I'll give you a good example just to follow that point on though, Chris. Liverpool, John Nenson captains us to a Europa League final, a League Cup final, a Europa League final, and a Champions League final, and we lose them all. And people blame Jordan, people blame Jordan Henderson and say he's not good enough. When, let's be honest, there's 10 other lads in the team who you are know, pulling, pulling the, the, the weight, and it's not necessarily his job to be the guy because he's not Gerard, because he's not the guy who scores big goals in big games per se. Um, but you're right. Like no one, bra no one blames Kevin De Bruyne because he's just the the flair player. It's the other lads who are tasked with doing it. Jordan Henderson is right there in the thick of things. If it goes well, he gets he, he, he doesn't, doesn't get quite get the credit. Doesn't get any. Of and if players. it goes badly, he does. He, get, he gets drawn into. But the that's the thing criticism. because what Jordan and the difference here is you can't look at a goals and assists column here. You know that's what you can't. What what are the stats on that sheet there in front of you? Um, uh, Trent Alexander Arnold, Virgil van Dijk, and John. What, what are they? Appearances. <laughs> Appearances forty, goals four, assists five. Right, well, that's ridiculous. When we're looking at goals and assists from a midfielder who plays in Jordan Anderson's position, mm -hmm. facilitating what Trent does and what everybody ahead of him does in his team. The only stats that matter to Jordan Anderson is the wins column and the losses column and the draw column, and that that's it. That's what he's there to do. And Liverpool have had their best ever season. Yes, they've got talent around him, but he's played at that level he's with them and made them a... He's one of the lads, he's not the only lad, but he's he's put the foundations in place for them to go and achieve and get the accolades that they deserve, which is why it was so great to see the accolade that he got for the Football Writers Player of the Year. And I actually think that Kevin De Bruyne is a better footballer than Jordan Henderson. I think if, if there's a Player of the Year award that doesn't include everything else and it's just on appearances on the pitch... Jordan probably not in the top three in the Premier League, but it, but it, football's so much more than that. There's so many more intangibles that go into this game, and and that's why I I use convince me to knock that up to a ten. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I, I look at those the lads who play in mid, generally play in midfield, and I've been buying this drum phrase, particularly teams where the the goals predominantly come from the front three, like Barcelona. No one ever criticised Xavi for not scoring fifteen goals a season. Or Iniesta, or who or Busquets for God's sake, you know, like nobody go, nobody's asked because they 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 they're just they're good at footy, they perform a function, and they they look they must be good because they're playing for Juventus, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. You must be good because you're getting picked in that team every single week. Jordan Henderson isn't allowed that leniency from a lot of people. And I wonder genuinely whether there's people on the continent who are, haven't got a bitterness associated with Liverpool Football Club or whatever who probably look at him in the same way. Because again, it's not quite a comparable one. And, I, and there are other ones, but like uh, Middle and Pjanic played b predominantly as a DM this season. He played 41 of his, of his games in, in DM. But he, you know, he, he's not. No one's saying why aren't you scoring 10 goals in that position? Mm -hmm. Artur Bar Barcelona doing similar, doing similar sorts of Jordan Henderson numbers, and, and you know, and, and you've got Messi talking about how he's. He's a phenomenal talent and all this kind of stuff. It's just yeah. and also like let, take into account what happened in his career. Like this isn't a lad who's had anything handed as Arrow was saying before handed to him. He was literally told he could go. He's not part of the plans. And how many footballers have gone? Oh, oh yeah, how many footballers have you? I've, I, I do, over the last five years, even on the Jurgen, has Jurgen gone to them? You're probably only going to get 15 games straight, boss. Yeah. 
Like he was literally told, we don't want you anymore. We'd rather have Clint Dempsey. And he went, nah, I'm going to fucking stay. And next thing, a year or so later, he's the captain. But, it, but it, people and stay around. But then it becomes like a, a lot of diminishing returns or a death of a thousand because you've always got that doubt in the back of your mind. And I think that eats away at a lot of footballers. And even though they might originally plan to battle through and, and win the right Good to play and all that. Yeah. yeah, it's that doing it and, you know, saying it and doing it are two completely different things. Jordan Henderson, he's not just done it, but he's fucking excelled. He's not meant, you're not meant to come in. You're not meant to replace Steven Gerrard. You're not meant to be, be this position. You're not meant to become the player that you've You're not meant to go and lift the European Cup when you've got the baggage that Jordan Henderson carried. Because we had to watch him grow up. That's the worst part. We all have this in walks of life. You, we, we, we saw Jordan Henderson, the unfinished kid who struggled. And all it takes sometimes, bad, yeah. one bad season. All you've got to do is struggle in your first season. And for some quarters of the fan base, that's it. You are done. For all the angry uncles in the world who don't really watch the football too much, a handful of bad games at the start is all it's ever going to take to form an opinion. And lots of people have carried that with Jordan Henderson. And I am made up, made up that he's been able to do this because he's not here by, he's just not here by accident. Would it be fair to say then if we, if we don't put him in the category as a world-class player, would you put him in a category of one of the players with the world class mentality when it comes I to I think he is world class. It's just the everyone, everyone rates world class differently, differently don't yeah. they? Like, you know what I mean? Like, but I think that's what nowadays for modern football is that mentality side of how you apply yourself to your football lifestyle mm-hmm. is equally or if not more important than the talent you was naturally given and have been wal- waltzed through academies with. He's a regular mm-hmm. starter and captain of a world class football team. The difference. So you can phrase it, we can, it, we'll struggle with the phrasing. But there's plenty of world-class players who wouldn't get in this Liverpool team. Like, you know, there's people who think who, who think Mesut Ozil walks on water. No. You know what I mean? But there's tons. The Paul Pogba, people think Paul Pogba is world-class. And look, he's been well better since United, of course, since he's come back into this team, of course. He's just tremendous. He is, more, I think he's more naturally gifted a footballer than Jordan Henderson is. It's not application side of things. Paul Pogba doesn't get in Liverpool's team.